Welcome back to EconLine, everyone. In this lesson, we're going to look at long-run economies of scale and kind of the difference between short-run and long-run decisions that firms make. So I'm going to start off by just drawing a graph of a typical market with some costs. And we're going to put on here our typical price and quantity. Now, I want you to imagine that you were going to go into a business. And let's just say you were going to open a restaurant. Now, you put your business plan together. It's, it's fairly unlikely that you're going to go out there and open like this gigantic restaurant that can seat hundreds and hundreds of people. What's much more likely is you're going to say, you know, I need to get a small restaurant um, that I can that seat a few people, maybe do some carryout orders and things like that. And then as I get bigger, I'll expand. So as you look at the possible restaurant sizes, you're going to start off with factory size one. And factory size one has its own average total cost curve. We're going to call it ATC1. Uh, and basically then, the more you produce, initially we have the typical economies of scale, and then eventually we have diseconomies of scale. Uh, the economies of scale side could be thought of as this is more efficient, and this would be less efficient. So, if you were in this situation, you were operating this restaurant, and let's just say things are going pretty good. And after a while you decide, you know what, I might need to buy a bigger store. I need to buy a bigger restaurant because I find that I'm almost always producing on this part of my average total cost curve. So I'm inefficient. And at this point in my business, maybe it makes more sense for me to switch to a larger factory. And that larger factory, or in this case would be a restaurant, would be average total cost curve too. Now at this current quantity, this is where we start getting into the kinds of questions you see asked and the exam and stuff like that. Okay, so at quantity one, at quantity one, what's going on here between these two different factory sizes? Okay, let's take a look at factory size one. If we were looking at factory size one and using that restaurant, uh, we would be inefficient, basically. And it would be at this point, especially if we found that we were here all the time, that we'd rather switch to factory two because here we're getting more efficient. So we're on the downward sloping part of that curve. So this is how the firm has to make decisions because it's kind of like leaving the house. You know, when you go somewhere, you can't wait for all the traffic lights to turn green. You have to go and, and typically we can only just see to the next part of the road and have to make our decisions as we go. Now, if the firm was aware of all of the possibilities and it knew exactly how much it was going to sell in the long run, then it could just go out and buy the right size factory. And this is where we would see this kind of larger long run average total cost curve. Well, I'm just going to put that LR, we we'll separate it from the others. So the long run is made up of all of these different short runs. And as the firm is producing, it basically can only see a little further ahead at a time, or can only plan out a little bit at a time, so it has to choose these smaller sized factories. Uh, and then on a regular basis, again, we just look to see the quantity of units that the firm is producing, like in this case, and decide which factory size would make the most sense.